you guys it's your girl chelsea alexa welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome to my channel um this is week two of the braiding series uh last week i started my braiding series with week one which was how to cornrow for beginners i will link that up somewhere for y'all to um to go check that out and today is going to be how to box braid for beginners you don't have to know how to cornrow first but i think it's easier to know how to cornrow first before uh, trying to box braid so just check that video out first I'd say before uh, watching this one in my first video I gave you guys a little bit of background um, on myself I've been a braider since I was 15 years old I'm 26 now so that's about 11 years I have a lot of knowledge about braiding in general and recently I got my cosmetology license so I definitely have a lot of knowledge that I'm willing to share I do have my handy dandy mannequin here I got these this one particularly from hair school but I have gotten them in the past from Sally's. If you go on Amazon, they're probably gonna have a cheaper one for you. If you are only gonna braid, you don't have to get a human hair mannequin. You can get any kind of mannequin. Um, it's gonna be cheaper, but if you plan on coloring it and doing all that kind of stuff, then you're probably gonna wanna get a human hair mannequin. But okay, let's get into it. So I'm gonna be using this hair today for the video. It's the Expressions 3X Rua, and it's in the number 27. I don't have much experience with this hair. Um, it's pre-stretched as well. I don't have much experience with this hair, but I've used it a couple times and I really liked it. I do remember that. So I'm gonna go on using a tail comb first. I always think it's easier for beginners to just use a tail comb because this part's already straight, so it's gonna ensure your parts are straight as long as you use the tool correctly. So I'm gonna go in with my first section I'm gonna hold my tail comb flat and just push it through. Now I'm gonna come straight up and down. I go in depth a little more about parting in my first part of this series, my how to cornrow video. I will link that above so you guys can check that out. I do think it's beneficial for you to check that video before you watch this video because we're going to be using the same movements as cornrowing. So if you don't know how to cornrow, it might be a little bit foreign to you. So as I probably say in most videos, shine and jam is definitely the key. When you're box braiding, I think that a good gel is definitely going to be your friend. Personally, when I started using shine and jam, I think the way that I did hair completely changed. I noticed the change instantly. So I like shine and jam. <clears throat> I know other braiders might use uh, um, other gels and different things like that, but for me, when I found Shine and Jam a few years ago, that was it for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put some gel on my part to really make it crisp. And then use that rat tail comb to just comb it through. To isolate the part that I really wanna use. Got some of that braiding hair here that I was telling you all about. Personally, I'm a big fan of pre-stretched hair. It makes your life a whole lot easier. Pre-stretched basically just means the ends are already tapered for you. Let me see if I can move back so you can see. Most times, um, ends come blunt on box braids, and you have to taper them yourselves when you first start by pulling them like this. So the fact that it's already tapered definitely saves you a bunch of time. Another important thing with box braids is you have to make sure the size of the braiding hair matches the size of your section. If it's too much hair for a small section, it's gonna weigh it down and it's not gonna be healthy for someone's hair. I have probably a small to medium sized section here. Probably take about this much hair. So there are many, many ways to start a box braid. But the way I'm gonna show you guys is the way that I use most recently. It's not how I started off braiding, but I feel like this way is just way easier for beginners. And I think it ensures that you're gonna have a clean braid no matter what, which I think is the most important part um, in addition to how tight it is to the scalp. So I have my strand of hair here and I'm gonna try to take maybe a third of it, maybe a little bit less. There we go. This is my small piece and this is my full piece. I'm going to cross my small piece over my big piece. Here's my big piece, I'm gonna hold it in my hand. 
taking my small piece and I'm laying it on top like an X. Grab the small piece and pull it like a link. This is the small piece and then you have two other sections and they are just about equal. I'll show that one more time. So here's my big piece. I'm taking my small piece on top and then I'm gonna fold it over or under. This is the piece you should have. Once you have your braiding hair secure and you have your three pieces, use your index finger and your thumb to hold it at the meeting point and really press it onto the scalp. Because you're gonna want to make your braid reach the scalp. That's why people pay for box braids. They want it to reach their scalp and for it to look neat. So the important thing, or one of the important things with box braiding is you have to keep it tight to the scalp. What I will say is with these mannequins, their hair is, is typically silky. So when you're first practicing, it's probably going to slide down. That does not mean you're not doing it correctly. It's likely you just need more, need more practice. As you practice more, you'll be able to get it tight on the scalp. And the gel is not gonna help either because it's just gonna add slip, but it's fine. As long as it's staying to the, to the braid or staying to the scalp, I'm sorry, you're doing okay. In my how to cornrow video, I explained that I hold my fingers like this. That's how I feel is the easiest way. Again, I would suggest checking out that video because I go in depth and break it down. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but that's the hand position that we're gonna use for the box braid as well. So once you have this hair to the scalp, you get your hand and you're set. We're gonna hold our hands the same way we did for the cornrow. The real hair in the middle is gonna to stay together as one and then stay in the middle piece. So we have our right hand holding the right piece as we did in the cornrow. Our left hand holds two pieces now. The middle piece, which contains our real hair and the left piece. The middle piece is in between our pointer and our thumb and our left piece is in between my index and my ring finger. I'm sorry, my middle and my ring finger. So we really have to get comfortable in this position because that's what we're about to do next. So again, thumb to scalp, and then get your hands prepped like a cornrow. Right hand holds the right piece. The left hand holds the middle piece as well as the left piece. Once we have this, we're literally going to start like a regular cornrow. The right's gonna go under middle to grab the left. We can let go, just like the cornrow. Now, we take our left hand again to grab the left. Still with that same hand position. And we're going under the middle to grab the right. And again, right to grab left, left to grab right. At this point, I usually like to take the real hair and just tug on it a little bit. That keeps it closer to the scalp. And here's where you can go in with shine and jam and just blend that real hair into the braiding hair. So, we're gonna grab the right, go under the middle to grab the left. The left goes under middle to grab the right. And you really just keep that exchange. Whenever I see the real hair, I just tug on it a little bit always. Not too much, because it's gonna create bubbling in your braid, but just a little bit. Right grabs left. Left grabs right. And once you're comfortable up here and you think that you have a, a solid hold, you can switch your hands. And then you can just continue braiding. And that's when you can go a little bit faster. But this is a regular braid now at this point.
get a little more shine and jam to blend the hair. If this is someone's a client that you're doing, you really want to make sure that the real hair is blended so it looks neat. That's what people are paying for. So definitely don't be shy with gel because that's what's going to keep it looking fresh. Personally, I think you should keep on braiding all the way to the end. I'm still braiding. If you get to a point where you're here and the pieces aren't equal, you can borrow hair from the larger piece. So I'm going to take from the larger piece, add to my thinner piece. Now it's a little more even and I can continue braiding. I personally suggest braiding to the end so it doesn't unravel. 99% of the well, most of the time you're going to be dipping it in hot water anyways, which is gonna help it prevent from unraveling, but also I think braiding to the end definitely also helps in that. And there you have it. See how it's a little bit loose? That's okay, it's still there. You can adjust it. Another thing that's gonna help it from not being so loose at the top is whenever you braid, don't drag the hair down. I'll show you in the next one. But it's pretty simple if you know how to cornrow, it really is. Because when you add the hair, I think the way that I did, you already start with three sections. So you don't have to do anything crazy besides braid. So I'm going to do another one, holding my tail comb flat. Really pushing through. If you have trouble parting, like I said, I would suggest watching my how to cornrow video because I go a little bit more in depth about how to make sure your parts are straight. Now I'm going to take my comb straight up and down. And we have our next section. I'm going into the habit of putting shine and jam in the back of my hand. It just makes it easily accessible while I'm braiding so I can add it periodically. But I do know they have bracelets these days that have like a little metal table on top so that you can apply your gel without actually having to get it on your hand. So if you're interested in braiding seriously, another cool little invention, gadget type thing, you can get for yourself just to make your life easier. Definitely take advantage because braiding is, once you get the hang of it, it definitely gets tedious. So make your life easier. So going into this braiding hair again, I'm gonna get a decent sized piece to match the uh, part that I just created. I'm gonna take off about a third of it. I've got my bigger piece. I'm gonna lay my smaller piece on top of it, like a cross. And then I'm going to fold my smaller piece completely together to create a third piece. I would just check to make sure that the ends are all even. That's going to help to in preventing you from having to borrow hair so much, which makes the braid look a little uneven if you do it too often. Like I said before, I would take my thumb to the scalp to really eyeball my starting point and then set my hands up like I'm doing for a cornrow. So my right hand's holding the right piece, my index and my thumb is holding the middle piece which contains the real hair, and I'm holding the third piece which is the left piece in between my middle and ring finger. I'm going to make sure I have the braiding hair tight to the scalp and then I'm going to cross my right hand underneath the middle to grab the left. Then I'm going to grab my new left piece with my left hand, reset, and I'm going to go underneath the middle to grab the right.
I'm gonna grab my new right piece, go under the middle to grab the left. I'm gonna tug on the hair a little bit just to keep that tightness at the scalp. And then take my left to go under middle and grab the right. I might add some shine and jam at this point to blend this in. Tug on the hair a little bit to keep it tight. And now right grabs left, left grabs right, right grabs left, left grabs right. Then you can switch to underhand. And then continue just a regular braid. There are a million different ways to start a box braid, you guys. I'm sure at some point I'm gonna come back on here with another way to update you guys. But this to me was just the easiest way and gave me the neatest result in my opinion. I need to borrow hair, it's getting a little weak in the middle. I'll take it from this side. There we go, and continue braiding. Straight edge on the rat tail comb, push through. Straight down. Just remember, right goes under middle to grab left, left goes under middle to grab right. Right grabs left, left grabs right. It's just an exchange. Right grabs left, left grabs right. Left. Left, grabs right, and then you can tug on the hair just for a little extra security. What I was saying before is people braid and they're dragging every stitch down as they're braiding. If you just keep it tight, but keep it up, if that makes sense, instead of braiding down there, keep it tight, but just keep it elevated a little bit. That's how you prevent from dragging and loosening the, bra the braid every time. Thank you. 
I'm just doing regular braiding, guys. It's I'm doing it quickly, but I promise just a regular braid. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. We still have two weeks to go with this braiding series and I'm so excited. If you haven't already checked out my How to Corn Roll series, I'm gonna keep on plugging it. <laughs> Make sure you guys check it out. I will see you guys next week, like I said. See y'all later.